This video topic was requested by Sal R. I hope God speaks to them and everyone who watches it. They requested a video about a prayer for deliverance. This video is the answer that God gave me. Matthew chapter 6 verse 13 And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. A Christian's life is a life of battle, and the battle is fought on two fronts, the spiritual realm and the physical realm. There are temptations that lurk within us, and there is evil that is around us. Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5, For when we were coming to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings, within were fears. Why did the apostles say that his flesh had no rest and they were troubled on all sides? There were two reasons. When we looked out, all we saw was fighting. When we looked within, all we saw was fear. The battle against evil is always fought on these two fronts. And if we are to honor God's name, glorify him, and advance the kingdom of God, and do his will, we need not only to be forgiven for our sins, we also need to be delivered from evil in both realms, for the temptations that lurk within us, and the evil that is all around us. The Lord's Prayer. This is our focus today. We're going to look at these three things together. Why do we need this prayer? What we're really asking for when we pray this prayer, and how God answers us. So, why do we need this prayer written in Matthew chapter 6 verse 13? Evil was introduced to us at the beginning of the Bible story. We read about it in the book of Genesis, in chapter 2 verse 7. It says, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Evil has intruded into every part of earth, and it comes in many forms. Four of them are described in the book of Revelation chapter 6 where John saw four horses with riders. They are known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. All the horsemen bring death. They bring it by war, conflict, famine, and disease. Evil has intruded into every part of earth, the political, social, judicial, economic, ecological, and biological. Look at the news and you will find that the headlines are about these forces of evil. It's everywhere. This is why we desperately need to pray this prayer, deliver us from evil. But we ask God to deliver us from evil, not only because evil is all around us, but also because evil roots are deep within each and every one of us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That's us, that's you and me, those of us who call God Father, us the children of God. Why are we tempted? Why does sin have a place in our lives? Well, the book of James chapter 1 verses 14 and 15 says, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then, when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. As Christians, we're in constant danger and Jesus taught his followers how to pray this prayer because this is the nature of our lives and of the world in which we live. That is why we need this prayer, but what does it actually mean when we pray it? Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Jesus used the same words into temptation in the Garden of Gethsemane when he said to the disciples, Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but flesh is weak. Matthew chapter 26 verse 41 Everybody is tempted. You will be tempted, and I will be tempted. Jesus does not say, Watch and pray so that you will not be tempted. What Jesus said was, Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. In other words, watch and pray so that temptation does not overwhelm you. This is what Jesus teaches us to ask for in the Lord's Prayer. Father, do not let me get to the place where temptation overwhelms me. Guard me against that by helping me to watch and pray. This is a common theme in the Bible. Paul said to Timothy, Keep a close watch on yourself in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. To the elders at Ephesus, Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. And again in Acts chapter 20 verse 28, watch and pray and Christ will give you strength to prevail in the battle. Jesus teaches us to pray deliver us from evil. When we pray deliver us, we are not saying we can do it on our own. When we pray deliver us from evil, we are saying to God, this power is too great for us, but it is not too great for you to deliver us. Let your strength flow through us so we can withstand and not be overwhelmed. Send your strength so that, as your children, we can continue to fight as you would have us to do. 
Deliver us so that your mighty power flowing through us can be seen by the evil ones so they will flee. Will God answer this prayer when we pray it? Yes, definitely you can trust in that. The fact that Jesus teaches us to pray, deliver us from evil, is your guarantee that this prayer will be answered. Evil will not prevail in the end. How does God answer this critical prayer? God answers this last petition of the Lord's prayer by His bountiful grace. The word grace means something undeserved, that is freely given. God's grace operates in many amazing ways, and I want to focus on four of them today. The four ways God will send His grace to answer this prayer. First, there is what is called common grace, which is God's kindness to all people including those who defy Him. When we pray deliver us from evil, God sometimes answers this prayer through common grace. Every good gift comes from the hand of God, and that includes the good gifts enjoyed by those who do not believe. The blessings of love and family, the creative gifts of music and art, the discoveries of science and medicine, and the brilliant minds that led to them. Where did all this good come from? It came from God in whom the person who enjoys these gifts may not even believe. That's common grace. Matthew chapter 5 verses 44 and 45. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. The second way that God answers this prayer is through special grace. When we pray, lead us not into temptation, God answers this prayer through special grace, which is his kindness given particularly to strengthen us at times when we are tested. There is something very wonderful about special grace. It's only available to God's believers. God gives special help for special trials at special times to his children. Paul tells us about this from his own experiences. There were times when he had plenty, and there were times when he had great need. And for these times, God gave him special grace. I can do all things through Christ, who gives me strength, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. God gave strength to match the trial that Paul was facing at a difficult time, and God will do the same for you. He will give you all that you need for all that you face, especially in a time of great testing and temptation. God says in this promise, when you are at the point where you feel that you can't take it any longer, when you feel that you are stretched to the breaking point, His grace will be sufficient for you. He will infuse His strength into your weakness so that you will be able to endure it. That's special grace. And there is restoring grace, it's God's kindness when we have failed. I thank God for His restoring grace. On the night Jesus was betrayed, Peter was tempted. Jesus said, Watch and pray that you do not enter into temptation. Matthew 26 verse 41 But Peter did not watch and Peter did not pray. Jesus knew that Peter would enter into temptation and he said, Before the rooster crows you will deny me three times. Matthew 26 verse 34 Most of us know these verses, but did you know that Jesus said something else? Jesus said to Peter, who was also known as Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you, that he might sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Luke chapter 22 verses 31 and 32. Jesus knew that Peter, aka Simon, would fail, but he prayed that Peter's faith would not fail, and that's why sin did not have the last word in Peter's life. He turned again. That's restoring grace. Jesus went to the cross and died for sinners like Peter and like us, all of us. Everyone is a sinner. Then he rose from the dead and after seven days ascended into heaven, where he intercedes for us. He prays on our behalf. That's why sin will never have the final word in your life. Like Peter, you and I will fail, but like Peter, you and I will turn again, and when we repent, we will be restored. Because Christ has prayed for us, even when we fall into temptation, Christ will never let us go. There is a wonderful verse in Micah chapter 7 verse 8 that will help you when temptation overwhelms you, especially if you feel defeated by your own repeated failures. Rejoice not over me, O my enemy, when I fall I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. That's restoring grace. The Lord is the light in your darkness. The Lord is your shepherd, and he will restore your soul. The enemy may have knocked you down, but by God's grace you will rise up forgiven and restored. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
God answers this prayer through common grace, special grace, restoring grace, and finally, the greatest of all. Saving Grace Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. Maybe you are not yet a believer and you are beginning to think, I need help, I need deliverance, I need a Savior. Well, God is the Savior you need. Maybe you are a believer, but you have stumbled and fell, and you are at a place where you know you need forgiveness that only God can give. Or maybe you have found yourself despairing of this world. You need the hope that only God and the coming of His kingdom can bring. These are the things that you can ask of God, and the asking begins when you come to know God as your own Father. He will bring you into an entirely new relationship with Him, and as a child of God you will have more than common grace. You will receive saving grace, and when you are tested, God will give you special grace, and when you fail, God will give you restoring grace. God will put His Holy Spirit in you, giving you a new love for Him. Because you love Him, you will have a new desire that God's name will be honored. You'll have a new strength to do His will. You will have new confidence because you know your Father will protect and provide for you. You'll have a new peace because you know that He has forgiven you. And you'll have a new security because you know God will deliver you. So I want to invite you right now to believe in God. Ask Him to forgive you of your sins. Ask Him to save you. Ask Him to make you His own or if you are already a believer, to repent your failings and recommit your life to Him. Then you will have all of His graces to depend on. Let us pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Earlier this week, I had a subscriber ask that I post a prayer about deliverance from evil. First, I would like to say anytime I post a prayer, it is to be used just as a guideline. Your prayers to God are very personal, and you need to talk to Him in your own words. Hopefully, any prayers I post will at least get you started, because sometimes, when we're going through certain situations, we don't know how to start talking to God. However, in this case, the Lord has already given us a perfect prayer for asking for deliverance, the Lord's Prayer. Anyway, I prayed about it and I started searching for answers for a way to reply to this subscriber, and boy was I hit by the devil. I'd spent the last couple of days continuing to pray about this situation. All the while I was being hit by the devil every which way I turned. I've had three seizures as well as other health issues. I hadn't had a seizure in about a year until now. So yeah, the devil tried to stop me, but thanks to the grace of God, he didn't prevail. Brothers and sisters, you are in my prayers and I ask that you keep me in yours. Have a blessed day.